Hello, podcast listeners. You are now listening to the Coffee Health and Science Podcast. I am your host, Jordan River, and I want to thank you for tuning in today. Before we jump into today's episode, I implore you to share the Coffee Health and Science Podcast. Spread the show. It is how we grow. Today, we have show favorite back on the line, Dr. Coffee. How's it going, Dr. Coffee? It is going superb. I'm so excited. We're getting into the holiday season, and I'm fueled by holiday mm-hmm. cheer. <laughs> well, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm really fueled by the five cups of coffee I've had. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. So you must cut out the coffee if you have all that holiday cheer to to get you up out of bed in the morning. Have you jumping out of bed in the morning with the Christmas music playing? You must get rid of all the coffee. No, you just switch it up. You do a little bit of uh, holiday tweaking and you enjoy that. I mean, what's better than coffee during the holidays? Am I right? More coffee. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it is the perfect antidote to winter weather. There- It is the best. There is nothing better than sitting underneath a dead tree, drinking coffee and eating candy out of socks. (laughs) Exactly. Precisely. (laughs) Today we are talking about holiday drinks. But, uh, you know, we've talked about this before, this wave of kind of commercialized holiday drinks that hit the drive throughs and how high they are in sugar. Um, And today we're talking about the alternative to that, you know, if you're looking to enjoy the holidays, if you're looking to up your calorie intake and enjoy all the flavors that uh, December has to offer, you want to do it right. And so Dr. Coffee has put together some recipes that he's going to share with us and we're going to talk about it. I'm super excited, Dr. Coffee. I am too. I am too. Yeah. To elaborate on your point, Jordan, the, um, the, the chains all try and do something. And the other day I went into the caribou coffee and I had a caribou nitro ho ho mint mocha. <laughs> <laughs> Did you really? And I hated it. <laughs> 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 yeah, I didn't like it. It, it, it. it crushed candy. I mean, it was it was not good. So I'm not knocking caribou, but I, I think these chains have just not done a real good service. And I think just like I make my own coffee brews and I make my own cold brew and um, I do my own thing. I think you can do things at home that are really great. I'd like to discuss some of them today. Absolutely. Let's dive right in, man. Share uh, share with us. I believe you have some caramel recipes. I don't know if that's a good place to start. Oh, I love my caramel recipe. Sure. So Irish coffee. You all know what Irish coffee is, right? Uh, that's where you isn't that where you add liquor? Yeah, I mean this is the holiday, man. <laughs> I'm just making We're sure. Talk I didn't want some <laughs> liquor drinks. I didn't want to speak out of turn. I wasn't like shocked that people are drinking at the holidays, but that is correct, oh, man, right? You, you make a wonderful <laughs> cup of coffee, like a purity coffee, and then you're going to kill kill all the antioxidants off by pouring in a nice shot of Irish whiskey. Ah, yes. And you're going to put in some brown sugar. Ooh. And then you're going to add a little bit of butterscotch schnapps. Oh, wow. So it's doubly strong and adds the butterscotch flavor. Now, if you really want to kill yourself, add some whipped cream. <laughs> wow, man. That actually <laughs> sounds maybe incredible. Maybe a caramel drizzle. <laughs> Holy and crap. That's my, and that's my one day during the holiday uh delight. I like that a lot, man. Yeah, that sounds like a delicious treat uh, for the e- little evening coffee, maybe. Um, the Irish coffee with the butterscotch schnapps. All right. I love that. I love that. What else you got? Maybe something with a, with with sans alcohol, let's say. <laughs> oh, no. We're doing alcohol first. No, we got to do the alcohol. Man. <laughs> Hit me. <laughs> so another one I like is my maple pecan latte. Mm, that sounds delicious. So you go out shopping, you buy yourself some maple pecan syrup, which is made from maple syrup and pecan butter, brown sugar, and a little cream. And um, put in a shot of uh, whiskey. And then mix it into your espresso with a little steamed milk. And you've got my maple pecan latte. Whoa. And if you want, you can leave the whiskey out of that one and it's still delicious yeah that sounds delicious the espresso must really um pair with that maple flavor i could see how that 
kind of hard hitting espresso with the light, uh, airy maple flavor on top of it. That one sounds delicious to me. Yeah, it is good. And then, uh, not to give, now that we've talked about whiskeys, let's move on to something fun like, uh, cognac and amaretto. Oh man, you really weren't, I thought you were making a joke. You got a lot of hard drinks here. Yeah. Hit me. I love it. Oh yeah. You know, on the, on the first night of Christmas, my true love gave to me caramel mocha a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you got to do all eight nights or whatever it is. 11 <laughs> nights. Yeah, baby. Uh, each night for Hanukkah, you have to drink a different drink, right? <laughs> I think so. I think I remember that about the uh, Jewish tradition. <laughs> <laughs> so make a French press coffee uh-huh. and add to it cognac and amaretto. Mm. And um, I call that the French cognac and amaretto coffee. <laughs> oh, that's, that's easy. Wow. That sounds very, very exotic. Wow. It is. It. It's delicious. It's absolutely delicious. And then how many people are traveling? Nobody's traveling this year. Thank God that we're maybe going to see the end of this pandemic in the next year. And then you can go back to the Caribbean where what's your favorite alcohol of choice in the Caribbean? It's got to be the rum, right? That's right. So a Caribbean coffee, you add that make your nice coffee. Mm-hmm. And add to it uh, some rum and some amaretto mm-hmm. and a little bit of milk and a little bit of almond flavor. Ooh, I like that kind of sweet almond play off the sweetness of the rum. Yeah. Ooh, I like that one. That one might be the one that I would try of the of the alcohol because I do like a I do like a nice sweet rum. I'm not a drinker, but that's one that I would try. I like that for the Caribbean flavor. You know, we can we can escape to the Caribbean, uh, you know, mid pandemic with a little bit of the little bit of spiked <laughs> coffee. Am I right? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Love it. That's right. What else you got? If I have a really special recipe. Everybody, go get your paper and pencil, or you can contact. Uh, Dr. Coffee, Jordan will give you the way to contact me. Doc at level one diagnostics.com is the email or hit me on Instagram at Jordan River IG level one diagnostic, the one numeral one. And I will send you the favorite thing I, m- I make for the holidays. Oh, what, what, what is it? You got a tease it. What is it? Oh, it's coffee fruit cake. Oh, wow. That's probably a longer recipe, huh? <laughs> it is a long recipe and I'll be glad to send it to anybody, but you know how you go and you always buy that junky Claxton fruit. Cake. Well, it's not junky. They do a good job, but it's not what I would call a really great, great fruit cake. I've tasted some really great ones, but you know, you sit down with your piece of fruit cake and your cu- cup of coffee and you're thinking, why do I have two things when I could just have one? Absolutely. I could have coffee fruit cake. Absolutely. Coffee cake is, uh, is the yin and fruit cake is the yang of the, of the desserts. So to bring them together is a perfect, perfect harmony. Right. So you're going to need some flour and some cinnamon and some salt and some cloves, cloves and some nutmeg. And then you're going to put in the fruits, which is some raisins and some currants. And I get some apricots and cut them up and a little bit of fig and a little bit of date. You put them all in, mm. add some uh, strong coffee, uh, some butter and sugar, and some eggs, and then the uh, the uh, secret is using some good molasses, but not the robust or blackstrap molasses, just some simple molasses. Ooh, oh, I love and that. You, yeah, so I will be glad to send anybody a couple of recipes that we do around here for fruitcake if they want it. Love it. Doc at Level 1 Diagnostics, the numeral one. Did you have any more um, drink recipes for us? I would love to go over some uh, some ones that I have in front of me, but I'd, i got to get through your recipes if you have any more to share. Um, I just really have one, which is um, a peppermint coffee. Ooh. Um, I've eat, I've tasted a peppermint coffee at one of the chains and it, it wasn't very good because I don't think they used a good quality peppermint. Interesting. Um, 
um, what you want to do is get a real good peppermint liqueur or a real good peppermint, um, one of the additions to coffee that doesn't have alcohol in like it. Like the extract, the peppermint extract? Yeah. Nice. And put it in and add some milk and or some cream. And bing, bang, nice boom. Peppermint. Yeah. Easy. I absolutely love it. And I know there are some peppermint coffees that are made, um, that are produced with peppermint flavor. I don't, I don't know exactly how they do that. It must be during the fermentation process or maybe adding of the, uh, of the extract in some way. But yeah, there's all these holiday coffees you can pick up too. Don't forget that you can get a nice flavored coffee that's not flavored with the stuff that they flavor it with at Starbucks. It's been, it's been produced with that, you know, like an orange flavor or a peppermint flavor or a vanilla flavor. And that's a nice way to kind of switch it up at the holidays is switch to a different brand of coffee that uses a natural flavoring process. And that's, that's enough of a change for, for simple old Jordan to get the holiday spirit going, but that's just me. Uh, Dr. Coffee's <laughs> he's adding the liquor. He's going hard for the holidays, as you should. There's no better time to do it. Um, Dr. Coffee, no what egg. What do you got, George? I was going to say no eggnog in your recipes. You're not an eggnog fan. Is anybody really an eggnog fan? <laughs> um, you know, I just don't do a lot with eggnog. Um, Alcohol and so eggs. So if you got some, not your favorite combination. <laughs> <laughs> but if you have something about coffee and eggnog, let me hear it. I found that uh, I was looking through the list of one of the biggest coffee chains, um, promotional holiday drinks, and one of the things that came up was eggnog latte, and this can't be alcoholic, so they must be using a (laughs) non-alcoholic eggnog uh, with this, and even if you get a, what is the grande, the small, I think? Oh, it's like the middle size. Even if you get a grande eggnog latte, which I believe is non-alcoholic, as I said, you're getting 52 grams of sugar in that. So make sure that it's worth it. If you're going to treat yourself out, you have to make sure that it's not an everyday thing. You have to make sure that it's a once in a while thing because that is a lot of sugar. Let's see how it bumps up when you go ahead and get the large. It should be about a 25% increase to 68 grams of sugar. Now, there's no way that you're getting 68 grams of sugar when you're just adding a little bit of Irish this or that and some brown sugar, right? You're not even breaching close to that. Correct. Correct. I mean, what is a spoonful of sugar? I, I I don't know how many grams that is, but it cannot it cannot reach to sixty eight, close to sixty eight grams. So, um, I like this kind of homemade idea, uh, and like I said, look for those flavored coffees. There's some great ones out there, and those aren't going to have the pumps and the drips and the flavorings and the syrups. So, looking down this list, they're all bad. Caramel brulee uh, ranks right up there. Same sixty one grams of sugar. Peppermint mocha, ranking up there at 68 grams of sugar. They do look delicious, though, I'll admit. They make them look delicious. So, Is it the syrup, Dr. Coffee? I think that the syrup is the concentrate. That's the thing that we don't have in our households, that they do have in the drive-thru, that seems to pump up this sugar and calorie count. Is it the syrups? It is. So the brand, I think, is Tarani, and they make a whole line of syrups. Um. I just texted my daughter, who's really the baker in our house, and I said, how do you make latte? So she said, you take milk and egg yolks, cinnamon, nutmeg. How do you make latte or eggnog? Eggnog, eggnog, sorry. No problem. Yeah. So milk, egg yolks, cinnamon, nutmeg, and she said, add some honey and blend it. Ooh. And then put it in a saucepan and throw in some cloves and cook it until it becomes thick. And then you add some vanilla extract. Oh, so then that... you use a fine mesh strainer to remove the cloves. So that's the non-alcoholic eggnog recipe that Lisa just sent me. And then you spike it if you want to have an extra good time on the holidays. That's right. If you, you want to get fired it. at the Christmas party, you go ahead and spike it with the, <laughs> I don't know what they put in eggnog. Uh, <laughs> this is great, Dr. Coffee. A little exploration for the holidays. What are you drinking on this holiday season, personally? What am I drinking on this holiday season? Like, what do you got lined up? What are you What are you going to put together when we get off the phone here? So, I like making a pumpkin spice latte. You make that yourself, or is uh, that something you bought? I make that myself. Oh, please elaborate. It's- Oh, sure. It's real nice. Um, It's not hard to make. 
Um, I can also send anybody the recipe for for pumpkin spice latte if they really want it. And I use some almond milk. I make it real healthy. It's it's about um, a large cup will give you about 250 calories. And oh, man, uh, it's only about 12 grams of sugar. And uh, I've got, you'll get about 20 grams of protein out of it. So it's a nice, healthy drink. Um, you can make it as a veg- vegan um, by not using any whey protein or dairy. I oh, love it, man. A little health, little health shot in the coffee. I think I might pick yeah. up some uh, vanilla coffee or peppermint coffee myself. Uh, I have gone almost fo- exclusive fully black just because I don't, I don't know, I don't bother anymore. I just brew it up and go. So those flavored coffees are really the way that I, that I spice it up. And I'll probably go for some vanilla or some peppermint. But that pumpkin spice coffee, man. Yeah, I'll have to get that recipe for myself. I like that. And again, email doc at level one diagnostics, the numeral one. Cool, Dr. Coffee. This was a this was a great exploration today. I uh, I will let you go and get to your holiday drinks. Any final words before we sign off for the listeners this holiday season? Yeah, we've had a tough year, 2020. I mean, I think 2020 will come uh, um, its own mem of when you want to cuss at somebody, you just say 2020. So <laughs> we've had we've had a really rough 2020. We're going into 2021. Um, I want everybody to remember that it's not what's under the Christmas tree that matters. It's who's around it. Mm, that's a and, wonderful uh, message. Happy holidays, everybody. Thanks for listening to the, the podcast. Appreciate you all. What, what fine and wise words from Dr. Coffee, and I certainly concur. Thank you all for listening. I appreciate each and every one of you. I hope you have a wonderful holiday season, however you're celebrating. This is Dr. Coffee and Jordan River signing off, wishing you an extraordinary day. We'll see you next time on the Coffee Health and Science Podcast. 